Hi, I'm Joe Archer, and um, this is an excerpt from a PowerPoint presentation that I gave in class, English 444 at Ball State University, um, for one of my final projects. And uh, the project was all about bringing comic books into the classroom and trying to think of the rhetorical process in which a student uses to make meaning out of comics. And the first thing I want to talk about is um, the means in which a comic is understood, which is the panel. Um, Scott McCloud and Will Eisner came up with this definition of comics over time. Comics as sequential art, meaning um, you have two panels, both showing a representation of reality held in by the frame. And over the course of two panels, you can communicate a lot of ideas like motion and time and space and noise and size, all sorts of things. The only trick is you need more than one panel in order to create a contrast between two different interpretations of reality. And so, one thing that the panel does is communicate singular ideas. And here's a few examples of that. This is from Full Metal Alchemist, which is a, a manga, very popular in Japan and also picking up steam here in America. Um, this is an example of a guy just going through a basic conversation and the singular idea being processed here, being communicated here, is that dialogue is going back and forth. You notice in some frames that um, the guy speaking is dominating the frame, in other, other frames there's smaller sub-characters. It just jumps back and forth. It's very choppy, like a conversation would be. In this one, the panel is being eliminated, the frame is gone altogether, and the actual limitation of the art is the page. So it gives a sense of foreboding danger that one of the main characters in the suit of armor down there is being stalked by the shadow monster. This last one, the frames, communicate a very clear sense of chaos and panic. Notice all the jagged, jagged framing, the motion lines that go from one frame to the next show that time is moving very quickly and the explosion is passing through many points of reference, many points of interpretation. Also, what panels can do is construct an argument by the way they're set up. This is where the writers and the illustrators have a lot more control over the panels and actually make complex arguments. So we notice this one, this is The Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller. And what he's doing here is setting up a very complex argument, which is a dichotomy between Harvey Dent and Batman. So what's happening is, notice in the top frame, Batman's foreboding and ominous and sort of looming over Harvey, Harvey Dent, which is laying down on the table there. And in the story, Harvey Dent's had facial reconstructive surgery. But what Batman sees is tilt, still that two-sided nature. Notice the light on Harvey's face in the next four frames. And by the third one, Batman's no longer seeing the, the polished outside exterior, but he's seeing the inward monster, which isn't even half and half, is fully monstrous. And so, now what Frank Miller does is compares Batman to Harvey by the next four frames and shows that same same split face that Two-Face has on Batman with the shadow. And that monster that Harvey has inside, Batman also has a similar monster, which is his alter ego, just the bat, which is fear. And so, by the bottom, Batman's no longer foreboding and looming over Harvey, but he's crumpled down on the floor and there's broken glass and ruffled shutters. So what's happening is Frank Miller was one of the first ones to take this idea of Batman and Bruce Wayne. See, before in the kids' shows, Batman was mostly Bruce Wayne, and he'd jump into his costume of Batman sometimes. But Frank Miller turned that idea on its head, and instead he makes the argument that Batman is the main character, and he steps into the costume of Bruce Wayne sometimes. Very interesting. And the last way in which panels actually function is closure. This is Scott McCloud's definition of closure in understanding comics. It's just the idea where the audience can participate explicitly in the action. So what's happening here is we see these two characters, one following the other one with an axe, and all we see is the precursor to the action and the result of the action. The action itself is something that's completely implied by the space between the panels, which the audience gets to recreate themselves. So I get to decide, and you get to decide, how much blood there is, where he hits him with the axe, how loud the screech is, what it sounds like, how fast it happens, how much time is taken. So we all get to participate with the comic in a sense. And so from here, we can begin a lot of research. We can look at space 
time, dimensions, all sort of really, really interesting things, um, and draw conclusions to new forms of research.